In Algebra 1, Section 5.4, we're dealing with solving special systems. Now, in this, in this section, you can choose which of the three prior methods you want to use, graphing, substitution, elimination. Um, if you're not sure and if you don't want to choose, stick with elimination. It works for all, but it is the longest one out of all of them. So the first one um, we're going to solve, because this is already isolated, I'm going to use substitution because it's shorter. Uh, this is... Remember, substitution is the one where I isolate a variable, which is already isolated, and I put it the other side in a bubble, and I replace it here. So I'm going to do negative x plus this entire bubble. And again, I'm not dividing it by y or multiplying it by y or putting it next to y. I'm replacing it completely with y. Um, x minus 4 equals 3. Again, I rewrote this whole thing, but instead of this y, I replaced it with the bubble. Okay, now I have it in one term, which is x. So I end up with negative x and positive x, um, which negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So that cancels out, and I end up with negative 4 equals 3. Here's the thing. I've gotten rid of the variables, okay? And I have a negative 4 equals 3. When does negative 4 equal 3, okay? When in the world, uh, when is a time where if you owe me $4, um, I, if you owe me $4, I'm going to give you 3 instead, okay? It doesn't work that way. So because this will never happen, this will be no solution. Okay? The next one, I'm going to use elimination. So elimination is the one where I have to... Um, put them right one under the other, okay? I could use substitution, but I'm gonna use elimination just to remind you of what elimination looks like. This is the one where I have to line it up. So I'm gonna rearrange this. This has Y on one side, so I'm gonna bring everything else to the other side. So, is that right? No, I'm gonna bring negative three X to both this side. So I end up with negative three X plus Y equals two. And on this one, the x and the y is on the good side, but the 2 is on the right side to subtract 2. So 3x minus y equals negative 2. Okay? So now I've put them in a way that I can put them one on top of the other. So I'm going to take this and put it right underneath. 3x minus y equals negative 2. Okay? I'm going to reinforce this so you can see that I'm working with these two equations. Okay, I, these already cancel out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them instead of subtract. I can choose between adding and subtracting, not multiplying and dividing, but I can choose between adding and subtracting. That way I don't have to multiply one side by a negative or one side by a positive. So negative 3 plus 3, this cancels out to give me 0. Um, y, positive 1 plus negative 1 cancels out to make me 0. Um, positive 2 plus negative 2 cancels out. So I end up with 0 equals 0. So the question is, when does 0 equal 0? All the time. If I have no pizza, um, I will have no pizza. If I have no pizza, I will have no pizza to give you. I'm hungry, so there it is. Um, so because 0 equals 0 happens all the time, this, this means that no matter what I plug in for x and y, they will have uh, all the same solutions. What that actually means is if I graph these two equations, they're going to overlap because they have all of the points shared together. So this is called all solutions. All right? So besides the no solution, all solution, you're just going to be dealing with elimination substitution, choosing which one or just doing elimination all over again like last section. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Try page 355, numbers 3 and 6. Um, page 355, numbers 3 and 6, and I will see you in class.